Let's take a look at some of the action, Gianni, and tell us what you think about what we saw in that final round. Yeah, in the final round, Lito was able to find a home for a straight right hand. And he found success here in this um, half guard position, pulling on the head and landing some knees, pulling the knee, head into the knee of Adi Wang. He was just able to land more significant strikes throughout the bout, even though Ad, um, Do, excuse me, was throwing up submissions like Misha Ted had the near submission. Lito Adewang versus Pong Suri Mitsutik. You were talking about two guys who both have 90% finishing rates. Anyway, you look at Mitsutik versus Adewang. This one is going to be fireworks. It promises a finish. Lito Adewang made a name for himself on one Warrior Series. He really showcased an aggressive style of striking. He puts the heat on you and he just melts his opponents. Lito Adewang is a wrecking ball. He's an absolute martial arts monster. He's a man who can finish you on the ground or on the feet. He's facing the aggressive striker Punk Siri Mitsati, the Muay Thai sensation from Thailand who's learned how to wrestle, who's learned how to stop takedowns. On the feet, Punk Siri Mitsati is a problem. Lito Adiwan needs to slow down the striking of Punk Siri Mitsati. Make Punk Siri Mitsati back up, not get comfortable into his rhythm. Adiwan has only one speed, and that is full tilt boogie. If Punk Siri Mitsati can drag him into the later rounds and then just pick him apart, that's gonna be an interesting way for Punk Siri Mitsati to approach this matchup. It is gonna be power versus power, finisher versus finisher, first round finishing specialist versus first round finishing specialist. It's not gonna go very far. Take yourself at all time. Touch glove, back to your corner. Lito Adiwak, one of the hottest prospects on the Judge. roster right now. Judge. This has been demolishing his Ready. opposition here Ready. at One Warrior Series. Go. He's got a tough task ahead of him in Anthony Doe. Very experienced athlete, former URCC champion. This one's going to be a good one. Adiwang in the red trunks, red band around his wrists. Doe moving. Kind of circling with his hands, changing stance, southpaw toward the rocks and back again. Bit Very light on his feet. Bit of a feeling around. out process. Yes. Yeah. Get the feeling that Adi Wank is a little ways up on his toes as well. Oh, right hand, left hand. Furious pace, the driving takedown attempt, a single leg. Those looking to lock his hands around the body here. He wants to go for a body lock, takedown. So look for him to try to get those hips across and go for a throw if he can get those hands locked. But Adiwang doing a great job knowing that that's what secures a takedown, and so he does not want to allow those hands to get locked. Great defense here. People don't realize how important that is, head position and wrist control in these types of situations. Locked in the corner post. I suppose the difference between a ring and a circle there, when you're in the corner post, you, you're jammed in. It's difficult to drive your opponent one way or the other, Misha, isn't it? Yes, huge hooks coming from Adiwang. He is very, he, he came out so calculated and calm and slow, and then the explosive power. But I mean, that's how you have to measure it, right? That's how he's going to keep his cardio if this does go deep into the third round, right? Is in this type situation now, he's getting that back, right? Oh, two big right hands. Doe goes down, he's back up on his feet, bounces up like a jack in a box. But those were big right hands from Adi Wang. Yeah, that's the thing that stands out the most from Adi Wang. He's so explosive. Goes from 0 to 100 just like that. Center, center, center. Time. Center, center. He's got that big shock of hair at the back, a little bit like his teammate Kevin Berling on from Team Lakai. He's that right hand cocked right away. He's ready to fire that. Anthony, though, needs to 
tie him up. Needs to slow him down over here right now because Adiwang has landed some big shots that hurt him. Anthony Doe has that leg though. See, yeah, he's trying to get, or excuse me, the arm around his leg. The arm's locked in between the legs there. I think that uh, Adiwang's already uh, postured enough though. He doesn't really have to worry too much about a submission in, in this particular. Oh, he's coming down with the left and right. From the upward position, there's a little head bump there. Nothing intentional, but that's just the ferocity of the situation. Both working hard, not languishing at all. Final bout of the evening. It's going to be a question of cardio, then Adiwan you'd have to favour. Team Lakai, absolutely renowned for that. Coach Mark is in the building, the head of Team Lakai in good spirits before we got underway earlier today. Those seems to be okay here. Seems to have recovered from the hard strikes from Adi Wang in the, just now. He needs to look to tie him up again because you know Adi Wang is just conserving his energy for the next explosion. There's that spinny, uh, famous spinning kick you see uh, used, utilized so well from Team Lakai. Yeah. Flying knee was a little bit short. His smile there. He does look a, a bit like Kevin Balingon, doesn't he? Balingon's big strength is a seamless attack, switching from feet to hands without any. You know, and what I really like about Adi Wong's style so far, as, as you mentioned earlier, Johnny, about pace change. He's really good at changing the pace. He's lulling Doe to sleep a little bit, kind of just being so relaxed and calm on the outside. But then he changes the intensity so quickly, and that's very hard to time. Very, very hard to time. But there you see Doe actually time the explosions of Adiwag. Sometimes it can work against you as well. If you swing a little bit too wild, it leaves you for openings. And Doe has the back of Adiwang right now. Nothing secured yet, but oh, Adiwang with the Kimura of his own sweeps him over the top. Great scrambles <laughs> Great by these scramble. guys. Adi Wong locked up a submission of his own and, and used it to sweep through just when I thought Doe was going to get on the top of the big takedown. Uh, Doe came in with a big overhand right there and looked to land the elbow as well, like a double whammy in one punch. And neither connected, but there was a big smile drawn from his opponent. Last few moments of this opening round, and it's been a ferocious pace. Adi Wong really giving it absolutely everything with every punch. Doe as well showcasing his experience, staying really, really calm, even though he's been under the barrage of strikes of Adi Wang. Final 10, ten seconds. seconds, opening round, last bout of the evening. Swinging back kick, we see that a lot, as Misha said, from the Lakai specialists. Nice. Swinging back fists, swinging back kicks, they love a swing. Let's take a look at some of the action from that first round, Gianni. Uppercut left took right cross and then keeps the forward momentum. The right hand, that was, that was the one that hurt him. And he kept the pressure up after that. Look at that. He just throws with everything, Lito. Anthony Doe. Now, the thing with that is as, when he throws like that, that hard, even though he's based in Baguio and they're known for the conditioning, will he be able to keep, the, keep this up for three rounds? It's hard to say, but I think only time will tell. I think uh, heart has a lot to do with that, too. And if there's one thing I've noticed about Team Lakai, I mean, they bring it every single time. They fight with their heart first. Um, so I, I can't up, say up, that up. I anticipate, despite watching how much effort, but I, I can't say that I anticipate uh, Adi Wang to slow down. Coach Mark Sangia always has, seems to have a very Ready. calming influence on his Ready? athletes when he's Ready? a tournament there. Yeah. I'm sure that's the influence he'll have on... Lito Adiwang, although he's anything but calm when he actually starts to mix it. Yeah, Doe was able to time the explosion of Adiwang late in the first round and get into the, the clinch, although he wasn't able to finish it. Let's see if he's able to time that a little bit more as this bout progresses. So Anthony Doe has a completely different strategy in this. He's trying to stay as busy as possible to confuse Adi Wong on when he should be explosive. When When is the right time? I mean, it's really hard to tell that when you have somebody who just won't sit still in front of you that's never planted. There's not really a perfect time to implement that type of explosive striking we've been seeing from Adi Wong. Right uppercut and left hand from Adi Wong there. They were glancing blows. Certainly did not stop Doe in his tracks. 
and much harder to hit a moving target. As you see Ari Wang really committing, he, he's throwing where Do is and not exactly where Do is going. Just constant movement, isn't it, from these two? Non-stop, both are swinging heavily. That was a good body kick, doubling up there. So we see um, Adi Wong's trying to change up his strategy a little bit. Now going to the body, finding that opening there, that's a good adjustment. Yep. You know, the, the, the strikes were missing, uh, the hands, uh, strikes were missing from Adi Wong, but the kicks, there was an opening there. Now going down to the ground, see Do timing that again, able to get inside. Yeah, but every time Do's been able to land a takedown, Adi Wong has locked up that Kimura yes. position. Working. You're absolutely right, Johnny. To yes. do that as you're on your way down to the canvas, take some quick flow. Oh, oh now. Into an arm bar, though. Yeah, great job by Dole. He, does it have it locked up? It, it is locked. This could definitely oh, this could be it, tight. It, He's got to drive good. in. Adi Wong right here has to drive down and in oh. and really try to collapse the pressure there. And he's doing a great job so far. Now he's working to get that. That was incredible. That was very, very deep. I think almost anybody else may have been finished in that. But great keep way working. for Adi Wong to keep his Action. composure in a very dangerous situation. Did exactly what he needed to do to escape. Yeah, doesn't really have time to think about being relieved, does he? Straight back into it. Yeah, both men really making the adjustments mid-fight. Adi Wang saw the movement of Do, started going to the body, and then Do as well looked to time the kicks and went under. That's how he got the takedown. But now they both position. back into the bottom position, scrambling, working hard again. Do working well with fist and forearm to get to Adi Wang's head. With his Do canvas. Yep. Now what have we got? Ooh, he's got a potential triangle locked up, but Adi Wang rolls up the top. Both men just perpetually moving. It's so hard to get that timing. Do, that's the second time that he's reached underneath that leg there and used that to kind of create an angle. Now we find Adiwan capitalizing. He's got a potential triangle here. If he can get those legs locked with the arm in there, he's trying to go for that. But Do, um, being savvy on the ground as well, recognized that threat and was able to shut that down. Now he's in half guard. I think when, when either of these guys get on top, they need to focus on neutralizing the one on bottom. So now Do is on top. If he wants to get some offensive going, he's got to slow down the pace, be a little bit sticky, right? Because these scramble situations, oftentimes both these guys are ending up on the feet again, <laughs> neutral, right? Um, so I think maybe slowing down. But we have a potential guillotine. Adi Wong, though, keeping his head high. Oh, and now the blows come from way back. Great ground and pound. Very well executed to stand tall on that guillotine then he realized as soon as that was going to break he was going to come down with the momentum and land that big right hand just relentless these two gianni there's no stopping is there it's just constant movement they have not stopped in the last Stay 10 in minutes the ring. constantly Stay in the moving ring. constantly moving both men see don't looking for a sit-up sweep over there but adi wang over here is okay adi wang can actually pass to the left side because do does not have his guard closed 45 seconds left, second round, final bout of the evening. Rich Franklin's One Warrior Series live for you from Singapore. Misha Tate, Gianni Suba, Steve Dawson. Been great action today. Rich Franklin looking to award a contract, maybe even two. A ticket to the big time. And these two know that that is what's on the line. Great job by Do, extending the leg of Adi Wang and using that with his underhook to get back up. But Adi Wang showing that strength, showing that explosiveness, pulls him back down to the ground. Looking to put that kind of crank pressure. Now he could turn that into a submission if he laces that bottom arm through. But that may be harder than uh, it looks right here in this position because... Time! Oh, well, that's it, right? That was a great bout. What a good display of martial arts. That's two rounds down. Here's some of the action from that second round, Gianni. Yep, there you go again. Doe's been able to get the back, but Adi Wang threatens again with the Kimura. This was the armbar attempt by Doe as Adi Wang looked for the Kimura again. Doe set up a really, really, really tight armbar, but Adi Wang was able to pressure out. This was a really, really tight armbar. Like Misha said, many people would have tapped it with this armbar, but Adi Wang showcasing the toughness that all these Baguio athletes show. Yeah, the judges will be looking at that, and that will weigh heavily in their minds. Submission attempts, but yes, submission defense as well. Final five minutes. The judges scoring the bout in its entirety.
Blue. The final five minutes tends to leave an impression, Red. doesn't it? Steady. It's the last thing that the judges see. And it's human nature, it's bound last to have round. an Ready? impact. Go! On how they view the entire contest. The touch of gloves as we enter these final five. Like Balingon, when Adi Wang kicks, he doesn't set himself. He doesn't take that little beat before he brings that leg up there. It just comes up. Oh, these exchanges with the legs and the knees. These guys are getting really good timing for each other. <laughs> if anyone was questioning the cardio of both men, Lolito Adi Wang, the answer is here. This guy does not get tired. No questions here, Gianni. Both moving very busily. Oh, the right hand came in. Doe was about to throw a left and it got pushed to one side. Bobbing, weaving. Very busy from the waist and from the knees. Right hand, single right hand from Adiwan coming in between the guard. Goes downstairs to the body. Although there's still a lot of movement coming from Doe, it has slowed down a little bit. He's planted a little bit more. These, these blows will definitely slow him down. Good work with the hands and feet. Team Lakai style. That seamless switch between the two. Doe gets back on the clinch again. He's been able to drag him down with the body lock. Oh, those knees to the midsection. Those are brutal. Oh. No, Thought he had a guillotine there, but Doe pulls guard to the guillotine. Does he have it? He has his hips on the wrong side. I don't think he has it here. He's got to, yeah, get that, that right hip more down to the ground and really lean over the top of that guillotine. I think arm in guillotines are a bit more difficult to finish because you have the arm in there to kind of counter leverage. And when you have somebody as tough as Adi Wong, it would be very difficult to finish an arm in guillotine, I would assume. I agree. Very, very, very difficult to finish that against a very conditioned athlete. Inside the final three minutes. Inside. Stay in the ring. <laughs> Being told to stay in the ring by the referee. Shouldn't think that's foremost on their minds. Knees to the head. Damaging, damaging blows. Three of them. Follows it up with a left hand as well. Doe does well to take those and come back with some punches of his own. Go back here. Oh, back head. Yeah, being warned about oh. to the back of the head. And as these guys are getting slippery, those submissions are going to be harder to catch. Yeah, they're just not holding, are they? Yeah, those still hunting for submissions, but they're so slippery in this round, third round. Both men so sw sweaty. Everything's just slipping out. Yeah, they're nice setups. They're good. They're good catches. Just Come nothing's work to able finish. to stick at this point. Could well be all about the blows in the final two minutes of this contest then with bodies slipping Stay all over the, the place and grip so Go hard to head. so hard to engage. Doe is doing such a good job of controlling that far side underhook. He's had that the majority of this bout. He finds a way. You'll probably see him try to swim this back under here if if uh, Adi Wong tries to pass. And that's really what's not allowing Adi Wong to control the position once he gets past the legs. He finds himself back in half guard or back in guard because there again we see, uh, you know, Doe is recognizing it. if he's going to pass, I have to control this far side underhook and that will allow him to get back into the position. Inside the final 90 seconds. Looks as if the judges will be called upon. Difficult one, Gianni. How do you see it? It's been very competitive so far, but I have to give it to Adi Wang. He's landed more significant strikes on the feet and on the bottom. Even though Doe is doing a lot of work from the bottom, Adi Wang is pressuring forward. Just really showcasing like Misha Ted, a full arsenal of MMA right now. Is that how you see it, Misha? <laughs> Look, I think that this is, is very close. Um, I, if I have to pick somebody right now, I think I, I agree with Johnny that it's going to be Adi Wong. But again, I'm just glad I don't have to be a judge in this one because I, I appreciate the offensive groundwork and submission from the bottom of Doe. You know, that great catch that he had with the arm bar. That was so close. I mean, I really thought that may be the end of the bout. I really think only Adi Wong could, <laughs> could have survived that. So it's, I think it's very close. 20 on, seconds left. Is there anything that either of these two men can do now to sway the judges' thinking? 
I think the onslaught of Ariwang is going to be weighing heavy. I mean, look how he's finishing. Ten he's seconds. finishing very Let's strong, finish. and that's another point. I mean, since we don't score round by round, a finish like this has to weigh heavy on the judges' scores. Great evasive maneuvers there from Anthony Doe, avoiding those blows that came down. At best, there was glancing contact only. Of course, wonderful sportship, sportsmanship and honor from these two. Wonderful to see entirely expected from one championship athletes let's take a look at some of the action gianni and tell us what you think about what we saw in that final round yeah in the final round lito was able to find a home for a straight right hand and he found success here in this um half guard position pulling on the head and landing some knees pulling the knee head into the knee of adi wang he was just able to land more significant strikes throughout the bout even though Ad, um doe excuse me was throwing up submissions like Misha Ted had the near submission in the second round, but I feel like Adi Wang had just landed the harder shots and just more active throughout the bout. But I'm not a judge, and this could go any way. Well, Adi Wang is on the left of your screen, and he gets the decision. There it is.